All right, welcome back. So we're going to look at four really important aspects of Photoshop animation that it's going to help you out a lot when you're doing your, your finished product. So the first is the single frame jump. Second is uh, hold interpolation. We're also going to look at the uh, option to put in a movies layer, video layer. And then we're going to look at smart objects, uh, more advanced mega smart objects. We're going to look at all the things that smart objects can do. So let's first look at the single frame jump, all right? When you're doing keyframe animation, uh, you've got, you know, a diamond here on this side that is one frame, and then you've got a diamond here on the other that represents another frame. And of course, you can jump back and forth between those two by uh, clicking these arrow arrows, go to next keyframe. But up here, you got a couple things, right? Go to first frame, you get your play button, and then you've got these guys right here. Go to next frame. This is really important. Uh, you're doing movies at you know 24 or 30 frames a second, and uh, you could zoom in real close and try to you know move that over one frame at a time. Uh, you know one, two, three, four, five, right? But the easiest way to do that. It's just to click this and move it over one frame at a time, all right? And the reason why you might want to do that is because let's take, uh, let's take an example here. Um, here's our guy jumping out of the grass, right? And he's, he's hovering there, all right? Now let's say we're going to activate the opacity uh, of this layer by clicking that and let's say one moment he's here and then one moment you want him to disappear so what you would do is you would click over one frame like this and then you turn the opacity to zero so one second he's there one second he's not just disappears so this uh, this move to next frame is really really important for doing very detailed work. So he's not going to fade in. You want him to just you want him just appear one frame later and in order to find that one frame you just click here. All right? So if you look at these little diamonds, right? What that means when you're going from one diamond to the next diamond is that your layer is smoothly transforming or your opacity is smoothly transforming, or your style is smoothly transforming from one to another. But what if you don't want that type of movement, all right? There are other options. So you can right click. So let's, let's look at the way the, the diamond works now. Uh, if we go to two seconds, slide over to two seconds and then move him, that means two seconds later, he's going to really smoothly slide over there. Then we go a few more uh, seconds over. And we slide him again. And very smoothly, he's just going to slide over there. But what if, what if we wanted him to, to get to a certain point and then stay there, right? What we're going to do, let's say after this diamond, we want him to hover there. We don't want them to move. I'm going to right click and uh, instead of linear interpretation, I'm going to do hold interpolation. All right. And now he gets to that point and he just holds there. And then when we hit the next ball, he jumps. So now something can just hover there. It doesn't have to go to the next state. So you can actually add uh, audio and video to your animations. Now, I've got a TIFF file open right now, okay? So this isn't a video, this is a statue.tiff with, with animation in it, okay? And now let's say I want to put a video into it. I can drop video straight into here. Uh, I can do add media, add video group, add video from clips. All right, and what I tend to do is, is just drag and drop. So I'm gonna grab my knife 
video knife.mp4 uh, I'm gonna drop it in there it is right here knife I'm gonna move it so that it's actually in the timeline and now it's part of it's part of the image and it's part of the animation too it is a smart object as you can tell by this icon down here it's a smart object which means I can click on the corner and edit it so make it smaller and now when I play my animation there's a video playing inside the animation now the animation is only three seconds long so it's gonna stop it's gonna disappear after those three seconds uh, I could I could copy it and paste it, right? I could Command J, make a new layer, put it down there, and now look, I've got this video group, and it's just repeating. Okay, over here in the folders, it says video group, and now I've got one video and a second video playing in like in a row. And because it's a smart object, I can transform it. So I'm going to click transform. I'm going to go to two and a half seconds. And uh, I will uh, I'll make it bigger. Now I've got to change the order so that the correct one is on top. It's a smart object, so we click on the corner, then we can transform it, right? So I'll click on the stopwatch, move to two seconds, click on the corner, enlarge it. And now we have a video that is transforming inside an animation. And that's what it would look like. Now that looks kind of weird, right? It's, uh, it's like covering over the art. So we can mask the video. All right, I'm going to unlink the mask right away, like I usually do. I'll put a mask around uh, what I want to hide. Command D gets rid of the selection. Command I inverts. And now, because they're unlinked, that knife video is going to be masked inside the box. All right. So that's pretty cool. So now we got video inside an animation. And because it's a smart object that I can transform, I can click on the object itself. And I could even rotate it. So now the knife is going to rotate down and get bigger. That's pretty cool. And this is all happening while the animation is going on. And then you can export that as a video itself. I hope you enjoyed it. We've just got a couple more tutorials left. Check out the next ones. Bye.